Um, this is Chris Bright. He's going to talk Freed, to us. Freed. Freed. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> At least I get to learn how to pronounce his last name. He's going to talk to us about the Internet of Things, and afterwards I'm sure Mr. Internet of Toilets will want to talk to us. <laughs> okay. He's looking for work, by the way. Nice. Okay. Yeah, um, so uh, I'm here. On, I was sent over by my company, uh, MMB Networks. Uh, we deal mainly with Zigbee, uh, also uh, everything else, uh, IEEE 802.15.4. Uh, so uh, I'll just go ahead. Um, so I'm actually, I've done some work, and I was a little bit surprised to find that uh, uh, Bastion uh, was here. And I basically uh, implemented a whole bunch of 802.15.4 stuff, and then I realized that someone else had done it only a year prior, and I was like, oh, okay, let me try this one. So here's a little overview. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with 802.15.4, but uh, I'll just give a f brief overview, and I'll just show some devices that are out there for consumers. Uh, this is primarily Zigbee related, but uh, you know, uh, stack kind of agnostic. Um, and then I'll just go over kind of my implementation details. So it's been, I'll just say this right now, the last time I dealt with Kinney Radio was probably in 2000. Uh, so it's typically used in uh, sort of home, uh, well nowadays it's home automation, that's the primary uh, focus. It used to be smart energy uh, and my company was involved in a lot of this stuff. Uh, so we have a lot of um, clients who we bring to market uh, that have new 802.15.4 ideas and we're partnered with all of the uh, silicon vendors and stuff like that. Um, I've got a couple of modules in case anyone wants to see them. Uh, I, I wanted to bring a couple to give away but uh, unfortunately uh, I couldn't order them in time so sorry. <laughs> but they're relatively cheap so um, in any case, uh, so I'll primarily be focusing on the uh, ISM band for uh, Ruby. Uh, so that's the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's the uh, OQPSK right here, 2450 uh, direct sequence spread spectrum. Um, this is, there's also the ultra wideband now, which is I find really interesting because I did a, some ultra wideband research as well. Uh, but uh, I haven't gotten my hands on that stuff yet. So. Uh, as you can see, there are channels 11 to 26. Uh, I guess they're uh, five uh, megahertz apart. Um, and I think the one on the end, actually, we're not supposed to use. It's just a rule of thumb, but uh, because it interferes with some other medical equipment um, or military. Uh, so here we'll go to get into the physical uh, protocol data unit. Uh, so we've got a synchronization header, uh, which consists of a preamble, which is uh, uh, all zeros, uh, four octets or bytes. Um, then we've got the start of frame delimiter. Uh, it's one byte, zero X A7. Um, minimum frame length, or sorry, maximum frame length is 127 bytes. Uh, this is kind of the odd thing. W with most communication systems, you have uh, MSB communication. We just generally refer to that as network byte order. Uh, IEEE 802.15.4 is a little bit odd in that it's Little Indian and least significant octet first. So uh, it's, it comes into play later. Um, in any case, uh, yeah, we've got uh, gray coded differential uh, modulation over here. Uh, so you can see that you've only got uh, maximum phase shifts of 45 degrees. And those zero crossings mean zero DC component, which is great. Uh, it's, it's more robust to uh, multipath. Uh, and then we've got a half sine pulse shape over here. Uh, and then I'll talk about this uh, bit, or sorry, I guess symbol to chip converter. Uh, so we take four bits and turn it into a series of 32 chips. Um, the odd, or sorry, the even chips become the, let me just look it up for a second. Uh, yeah, the I in phase portion and the odd chips become the Q. Um, so I don't know how many people remember sort of block coding stuff, but uh, this is kind of the, the typical uh, characterization. So you have N, K, D. D is the minimum Hamming distance between dissimilar chips. I'll get back into that in a second. Um, uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, so the Phi is responsible for uh, link quality indication. 
uh, and receiver energy detection uh, that has to do with uh, collision avoidance and clear channel assessment. Um, and we have the MAC. Uh, I don't think I included an example, but uh, a really simple one is the acknowledge frame. It's uh, essentially, it's got a payload size of three. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't have a full example, but uh, let's see. This is uh, acknowledgement request. So every packet that you send, you can actually request an acknowledge for. It's kind of uh, handy when you're debugging network stuff. Um, there's, uh, I think the usual is 16-bit addressing, but you can actually do up to 64 bits as well. Um, so the Mac layer, uh, uh, again, I, I used uh, Bastion's implementation. I think it's sort of uh, just you know, kind of the minimum to get going, uh, but it's required, you're supposed to implement all of these different function functions uh, in the Mac layer. Uh, I think transmission reception is, you know, more or less the minimum, uh, but in theory you should also do uh, sort of um, channel assessment and stuff like that, uh, ACK kind of delivery, um, so uh, this is, I don't know if everyone's familiar with Zigbee, but it's a mesh network. So you've got uh, a star topology. You've got kind of a regular mesh topology and then you've got a tree topology. You've got uh, the coordinator. So there's usually one coordinator per network and then you've got routers. Uh, and then you've got the device, the end devices. Uh, end devices usually are battery powered. Uh, you'll often find switches that are battery powered that you can just stick onto a wall. They actually now have uh, switches that are mechanically actuated that generate the electricity required to run uh, just by pushing the button itself, which is pretty, it's a pretty amazing feat. You know, most of these little devices are running a Cortex-M0. Um, I think these ones are uh, Cortex-M3. There aren't yet Cortex-M4, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty fun to play with these little arms. Um, okay, so here's just a, a couple of examples. Uh, uh, I'm not affiliated with Nest at all, uh, but uh, my company helped to uh, get a few of these guys off the ground. Uh, here you have, uh, I think, uh, so there's eye control, there's the uh, Zen thermostat, which was recently pretty successful. Uh, we've done a lot of work with Marvell, uh, Safe Plug, um, uh, these guys, Centralite. I've got a couple of these devices with me as well. And then Somsi, Blind, and Quick Set Door Lock. Uh, here's the thread sort of uh, re-implementation or whatever you want to call it. Um, so Thread, I don't know if everyone knows, Thread is uh, uh, six low pan based. And uh, although we focus primarily on Ziggy, we're also doing a lot of work with six low pan and even uh, Apple's IO kit. There's been a lot of new things this year in home automation. So, um, so I guess, uh, the question I'm trying to answer is why would you want to use an open source uh, 802.15.4 stack and why would you want to use uh, a, a, a software defined radio to do this stuff? And um, I guess for me it's, uh, it's because I've worked with a lot of these vendors, um, each vendor has their own software stack uh, that you, um, you don't license it, but uh, you're pretty much fixed to using theirs uh, when you buy their chip and use it in your application. Um, so, and, th and then I guess you're kind of tied to their, whatever bugs they have in their system, uh, uh, whatever security issues they have. Um, uh, I'm not saying that there's a lot of bugs, but, um, uh, it's just nice to have some flexibility, especially if you want to do some, um, experimentation with different, uh, standards. So six low pan, for example, I'd like to do a little bit more work with that. Um, so yeah, if you're doing security research, it definitely helps to be able to uh, inject noise, uh, you know, per perhaps corrupt some packets, <laughs> um, eavesdrop and whatnot. Um, so uh, I don't know if anyone here has heard of Freak Z. It's, um, I think this guy is from Tokyo, uh, but he developed this uh, open source uh, Zigbee um, uh, stack. Uh, I don't think, it's not certified, obviously, because uh, you have to be a member and all that stuff, but uh, it's out there. And uh, I just picked it up a couple weeks ago and, you know, added auto tools support and uh, 
made it into a shared library and reduced the dependency on Contiki and stuff like that uh, because prior it used to run in a Contiki simulator. Um, so um, before that, it was kind of locked into the simulator. And what I did is I just opened up a UDP port so that you could send and receive packets uh, via UDP. And of course, GNU Radio has a pretty great uh, kind of UDP block. It's a, a bastion that I think might have uh, done that, uh, where, you, where you put the, the MAC layer to the UDP block. Well, I put the, the MAC layer and the messaging and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, this is the hardware I'm working with. Um, this little guy, uh, it's kind of naked at the moment, uh, <laughs> but uh, this is a rapid connect USB module. And uh, this one I've actually got programmed to do uh, a node test uh, where you can basically tell it to send out a tone or you can tell it to uh, uh, send out a series of random actual packets. Uh, it'll teach you to send out four packets that are you know, not corrupt and will actually be accepted. Um, so this was fairly useful in uh, uh, putting together the whole receiver architecture and everything. Um, and then uh, I was able to just connect the UDP, uh, say some hello world messages and other random things like that, some acknowledges and you know, pick up the uh, communication. Um, I, I didn't get so far as to uh, create a, a really simple app where my computer would be a kind of a Zigbee end device and a router at the same time or a coordinator, but that was kind of the, the end goal. Um, uh, in any case, I'll show you a little bit about the uh, FreakZ test app structure. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, here's the uh, FreakZ. It's BSD licensed. Of course, if you want to do anything other than research, if you want to do a, like a commercial product, you uh, if you want to do a Zigbee, then you have to you know uh, pay the royalties, uh, become a member, etc. But of course, you could use Six Lopen, and then uh, you can just get going like that. Um, Let's see what else. Oh yeah, okay, so here we are with the uh, IEEE 802.16.4 block. I think this originated in UCLA. Um, I don't know much about Seagram, but I, I feel like it was gone suddenly because uh, there were all these references to it and then uh, suddenly they're gone. Um, I think uh, Bastion picked it up again uh, somehow. Uh, I think there are a few people that are still working with it. Uh, so I was lucky enough to find his repository, cloned it, uh, I just took the rhyme part out of the block, uh, fixed a couple of smaller issues that I have. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this is essentially the rhyme uh, transceiver minus the rhyme block. I've essentially uh, circum circumvented the, uh, the network layer here, and I've just gone straight to PDE socket. Um, it was quite simple. Um, this is unmodified. Uh, and then here we are with the, this is the receiver. Um, so I'll just quickly jump out to Freak Z. Hopefully I have that open. Um, so this was actually, uh, if, you'll, if you've ever worked with Zigbee, often you'll just find basically a test app. And what a lot of stacks tend to do is they tend to just provide you these uh, stubs that you fill in, which is somewhat OK. But uh, I, I'd like to improve this interface a little bit. Um, in any case, it's actually pretty straightforward to use the command structure here. Uh, so I was able to send out messages and whatnot. Um, let's see. I, ideally, I think I would like to, with the shared library, have kind of a registration function where you actually register um, according to an interface or a structure that has a bunch of function pointers. I, I think that's a little bit more uh, flexible. So um, as I said, like. Uh, I'm sort of getting back into GNU Radio. Um, this is what I got when I, when I finished. So this was me uh, with my uh, B200 and just two antennas right there. And I just had a kind of a loopback test going. Uh, so 
this, unfortunately this isn't a video, but what I noticed here is that I could actually see the, the group delay <laughs> happening. And uh, so I knew that there was definitely a synchronization issue. Um, and I wasn't quite able to decode all the packets from this. I was getting a lot of errors. And uh, then I realized, yeah, for sure, I definitely need to get a clock recovery block in there. Because normally this would be pretty nice. It'd have a nice QPSK constellation. Yeah? OK. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's actually pretty great that I'm here because I'm almost almost a newcomer to GNU Radio again. So uh, it's I, I'd really, if anyone has any pointers, I'd, I'm more than uh, happy to hear them. Um, so yeah, and then we just kind of decoded the hello world message down here, which is pretty nice. Um, so a couple of things that I noticed from the 802.15.4 block was that uh, the shift register internally was encoded uh, the wrong direction. So it works really well with the Ryan um, sim um, simulation block or whatever. Uh, but instead of having chip zero in the LSB, it ended up sitting in the MSB after 32. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Uh, it took me a little bit of time to figure that out. Um, the, uh, I think the sh threshold was set to 10. Uh, and one thing I kind of remember was that uh, you should be able to theoretically detect uh, up to, uh, so sorry, D is right here, uh, 11 errors. And I guess um, just kind of my interpretation of the receiver architecture is that uh, setting the threshold to 10 um, and just passing it off to the CRC is kind of like best effort to recover the packet even with errors, I suppose, right? Um, so I, I would probably just insert uh, a check to see if it's, if uh, the number of error bits were less than five, and then you know almost factually that you've got uh, uh, the correct packet. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I still need some uh, frequency compensation, I think. But uh, I was, I, I think I probably spent about two to three weeks <laughs> uh, before the uh, before the, this presentation. So uh, I actually felt that it was fairly easy to pick up GR mod tool and just get going. Um, uh, I still have a little, you know, I guess just some feedback in general, but um, I'd even probably be willing to uh, write some documentation once I understood a little bit more about uh, kind of the PDU and message passing stuff. Um, but uh, it was a little bit unclear. I found it quite useful though. Uh, and then I, I guess because I originally tried to do this as a stream in my first implementation, which is a little bit tricky, right? Because um, with uh, packets, you don't always have constant bits coming out. Uh, you end up having to stall or whatnot. Um, so there's a, a setting for the block where you can set the max and output items and the min and output items. Uh, so in this case, if you've got 32 bits coming out and four bits coming in, uh, your min would be 32 and uh, your max I think I had set it to 127 because that was the max for the, the packet size, um, or 120 or something. But um, what I found was that it was going from uh, 2048 all the way down past 32, and it wouldn't stop at 32. Uh, so there would just be, I guess the output buffer wasn't allocated uh, as I would expect. But, so it might not be a bug, but I kind of felt like it was, it wasn't really respecting that, uh, uh, sorry, min and output item. That should be min. In any case, um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Uh, feel free. I just want to say thanks to everybody, though. Uh, Matt Edis for answering some USRP initial uh, questions. Uh, Phil, again. Uh, Marcus Mueller on the list was really helpful. Uh, obviously, Thomas Schmidt and Bastian uh, for their work initially. And uh, I guess this uh, Hongbo Zhang, uh, or I, I can't remember what he goes by, but uh, he wrote the Freaks Out uh, stack, and obviously that's quite useful. So, um, yeah, and obviously all the GNU Radio authors and contributors. So, thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Um, 
You mean in the industry in general? Uh, or Yeah, just in general. Like, uh, I'm doing my master's thesis right now. I'm currently in the medical industry, so I have a lot of oh, really? uh, higher quality education. Oh, that's really interesting. I went there and I got my son to go to job school here at the university. Oh, cool. And that's one thing I actually didn't know. So anybody who is just another, mind you, there's a, there are plenty of pilot here. Yeah. Yeah, neither have I, honestly, but uh, I think there's a lot of uh, interest in the ultra-wide band because yeah. the, the preamble is so long that you actually get a really good uh, channel estimation by the time you receive the, uh, the first packet, you know. Uh, but, I mean, CSS is quite interesting, too. Uh, I can design for uh, mobile applications from the same company. Are you, were you thinking about, like, Zigbee or Six Low Pen? It's, uh, it's Zigbee. Uh, okay. I uh, know it's the same same file layer, totally the same. Yeah, this is just network and above. So, yeah, if you, I would re highly suggest using this freak set thing because it's it's seems really easy to use, um, and you should be able to just kind of drop in a sample application whenever. Like, or what I wanted to do with my laptop is just have, my my laptop is a, a Zigbee app with an on off, so that I could use. Uh, we have some pretty interesting desktop software. And then you just kind of go through the desktop through this, and you can toggle the on off. And so I was just going to get it to play a song or something like that, you know. But probably a couple more weeks, and then I'll be, you know, all done. But yeah, I'd be really interested to see the C uh, C CSS stuff. So yeah. thanks. Uh, yeah. Um. Most of the vendors that I've seen have stuck actually very well to the uh, specification. Like very few actually diverge from that. Uh, I'll just go a little bit out and say that Ember is very uh, is a very special provider. Uh, so you're familiar with them? Okay. Uh, any others? Okay. All right. Thanks a lot.